Okay, so, all right, guys, this is, I'm back from the intermission. <clears throat> I was thinking, like, what can I really say? And, you know, I was thinking that let me try to write three lines of code. Okay, three lines of, let's say, poetically philosophical reasoning. Okay, so I was like, all right, so first we look at the title and let's say there's three phases. Well, the first title is imagine when unknown beings became people. That's, that was the first phase. Then the second phase is when people forgot they were unknown beings. And the third phase is when people remember their un unknown beings. You know what it is? Guys, let me tell you why till the end of time there will be spirituality on this planet. Why? Because there's a sort of a sine wave of things going through. Imagine it's neither a physical or uh, non-physical. It's both, but it's waving between. So we're like experiencing that part of the wave which is physical. And then after, like, thousand, imagine as time goes forth, then non-physical, right? So it's like creatures, they flip around like pancakes when you fast forward history. So these are the three phases, you know, I was just sitting, you know, having a smoke on a bench here. <clears throat> and for a moment I was like, yo, three phases, we for when unknown became known, when the known forgot the unknown, and then when the known remembers the unknown, and when the unknown was forever the unknown. Do you understand? It's kind of like God is the unknown, and the unknown is watching all of knowledge. So when I experience myself as unknown, I get a sense of like, yo, how could Meister Eckhart say, you know, let God be God in you? What did he mean, mean by that, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. The unknown is accessible to human consciousness through presence. Anytime you wonder how reality is present, you notice it's present in an unknown way. How do you know it's present in an unknown way? Because there's still more ways you can know it. Right? That means this is what has happened in this world. There's been just a universal event, but at some point in this universal event, a part of it created its own universal event. Do you understand? Being a human being is, is, is acting <clears throat> like, you know, a mini authority. Like it's acting like a mini divine authority. You know, this is what I always thought that was fascinating about something about religion right that in th in the theological context they said god gave man created man out of clay and dirt and whatnot and then and then imbued him with his breath a soul and the soul is the breath of god so when they would when kabir for example this yogi would say uh uh would say disciple tell me what is god and the person would say the breath inside the breath that means the first breath, the first breath of causality, the first, the first moment where the soul was given, was, was positioned. Do you understand? The first moment where the chess piece, the pawn moved.
So what does that mean? The breath inside the breath. It means our minds are how God is experiencing the world. Our bodies are how we think we are experiencing the world. Or I, I'm sorry, I messed that up. The soul. <laughs> okay, let's say it. the mind is in a freer dimension. I think that's a cool thing to say. Don't you? Don't we feel our imaginations are free if we can imagine ourselves climbing a tree and we haven't yet? Like that's some freedom, right? Your mind can imagine interacting with stuff that you haven't physically interacted with. How incredible is that? The mind is here as a non-physical interactive uh, system with the world, you know? And most human beings, think about it if there were non-physical jobs. Can you imagine? Just because we think we're physical beings, everybody is getting a physical job. They're going and becoming part of physical companies, physical organizations. But imagine if there were transcendental uh, organizations. There were transcendental companies. And people were like, man, my body's working on Earth. My mind's working in the you know, cosmos. I don't know, man. I'm so busy. <laughs> Yeah. An unknown presence <clears throat> finds an objective body that upon movement leads to identity. Believe it or not, we have to be souls if the concept of identity wants to make sense. The concept of identity cannot make sense to a physical entity. You know, and we're all identifying with something. Some people are like, yo, look at me. I'm better than you. You know, I'm like, oh my God. You know? <laughs> but when will you realize that what is looking through all of our eyes is an invisible field of activity? In the Bhagavad Gita, it says, uh, what does it say? The unknown fields of activity of consciousness. The fields of activity of the unknown. We are in that field. Right now, it's no longer life. I mean, sure, you can always be playful and treat it as a joke. You know? <clears throat> you can always laugh at your, your world or the world. You know? I've laughed at both many times. Not laughed at. Like, you know, laughed with. I mean, sure, laughed at too. I don't know, but once we realize that there is a non-physical mover here, then the fear of objective failure doesn't make sense. So if I'm not an object, how can I just have a fear of what happens to an object? I would say most people might not have just a fear of death. You might have a fear of not knowing what this was while you were in it. That's a fear that has inspired me often, you know? You know, sometimes I didn't want to be the best person in the room. I just wanted to know what's happening in the room, you know? Many things I've learned, I've learned kind of looking from outside of a window, poetically. Meaning that I've conceptually introduced myself, then my mind had to go find images for it. So, for example, if somebody wants to teach what a zebra is, zebra is, okay? Or some people say zebra. <laughs> I think the modern people could pronounce it as that, you know, zebra, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like, am I pronouncing it right? It's like, not, not completely. <laughs> You know, one day, advanced AI, I've written about this in my sci-fi, is going to connect to the brains of animals and they're going to have human consciousness and they're going to be like, WTF? You guys have named us without asking us for our permission? You just called us lions and penguins and monkeys and all of this? And we'll be like, don't freak out, guys. We called ourselves so many names too. <clears throat> you know, and so I thought about, this might be a bizarre thing, but when it comes to a level of magic, Okay, let's say magic and divinity. First of all, I would say magic is ego bound. Ego bound means that you're, it's, it, the karma will continue for itself. 
That means magic is like an is is a, is is like a individual karmic game. You understand? But divinity is selfless, and it's kind of like you could say Vegeta was a magician, right? But Goku was like you know divine. You know, Vegeta found out the hard way. <laughs> You know, it's like, yo, did Goku become a god, man? Have I been competing with a god this whole time? Goku has this line where he says, power comes not because of a desire, it comes from a necessity. If you can align your desire to a global necessity, you not that you will be successful your success will be the world's success the you might not believe a lot of the problems on the planet are abstract and a lot of these problems can have abstract problems can have abstract solutions do you understand what i mean or they can have a solution as instantly as turning off the lamp do you understand sometimes you know there's been uh, let me tell you what would happen when i was younger when people were rude to me i mean sometimes you know if, if somebody's really you know, in the outer realms pushing, then I, I got to, you know, get, put a mirror in front of them so they understand what they're doing. Do you know? But <clears throat> at the same time, I'm trying to say when I was younger, when somebody would reduce me, okay, or I thought somebody would reduce me, I would get angry and be like, yo man, fuck you, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I'd want to like, you know, I'd get, I'd get kind of like, you know, shaky and, you know, trembly and want to like do something, okay. <laughs> but then I realize I am upset, not because of a physical thing. When somebody says something rude to me, they haven't done anything physical to me. They've just said something. They've just displayed language. And do you know what I do? I watch silently. It drives people. It drives people who who are trying to get me angry, crazy, right? Because I when I when I become completely silent, right? That person's like, yo, my reality is not being validated, right? And when you're insecure, you tend to validate any reality because you don't you don't you don't know, you don't know first of all your own reality, right? Imagine that you know your whole life you thought you're a peasant, and then one day you realize the idea of the soul is that you have a royalty to you. A divine royalty what do you think of the advanced civilization can be if something is think about we attain like 99.9 percent advancement as a species that's a, that's it would be like divine enough you know <laughs> hmm So, <clears throat> to reach a conclusion here, three phases, unknown beings became people, people identify with knowledge, second phase, people forgot they were unknown beings, this phase has been successful, and then the next phase, which is the surprise, all the people, everybody who thinks there's evil in this world, you're going to see evil is being administered by a will that is beyond duality. So evil is evil for those who think that good is separate. Do you understand? The idea is that we are 8 billion creatures <clears throat> on a rock in the middle of nowhere. Whoever you are, this is the grand puzzle we're trying to solve. This is what it means when, when Mr. Within says build an advanced civilization. Who else is going to build it? It's us. We are the chosen ones that the future is waiting for. It is us. All of us. You might think you're a statistic. You might think nobody knows your name. But your mere existence is being in the background of people's lives. Do you understand? We are having, it's like whether we like it or not, to be an individual in humanity leads to a collective result. Right? So we, it's fair to say all individuals are influencing collect, the humanity. Okay? Now the idea is evil people are going to be like, I'm bored. I don't like this kind of goodness. 
you know, imagine, because that's the retaliation, right? It's kind of like what the anime One Punch Man was trying to say, right? There was this character in it, I think his name was Garo or something, and this kid was born idolizing the super villains instead of the superheroes. That means imagine some little kids were like, yeah, I want to be Superman, but then this guy wanted to be the super villain as a kid. This little kid, that means neutral nature, and he's like, yo, why don't the super villains win? There aren't they people too? And this is the thing. When we forget we are people, we get possessed by our beastly nature. It is so important, the idea of humanity, to a point that I had to run to the New Age community and be like, yo, hey, hey, hey don't, don't dehumanize so quickly. Don't dehumanize so quickly just because you think divinity is timelessness. Don't dehumanize so quickly, there's work here. You know, it's, it's, it's a tactical thing, collective tactical thing. And so great teams will arise in the future. I think I will just have the privilege of meeting them. Do you know? Do you know what it feels like to me? It does not feel like a one man job. It feels like I'm running among the most advanced beings in the universal sector because we have discovered an advanced potential nearby, the advanced civilization of humanity. The Milky, the Milky Way Galactic Sector, there's a gem here, there's a pearl here, and it's glowing, it's shining, and the others know, if there are. What an advanced being is, is a being that is not afraid of the individual known and the individual unknown. It is a being that is not afraid of the collective known and the collective unknown. It is a, I'll say it again. An advanced being is a being that is able to experience and is, is capable of not fearing its individual known life and its individual unknown life. Yes, there is two. And then we have the species. So there is your collective, your species, the unknown life of the species and the known life of the species. The unknown life of the species, we're protected. Don't worry. That's a, that's something I know. It's just it's just such a obvious, do you know? So after that, we have to not fear. That means imagine you didn't fear being an individual, known individual, unknown individual. You didn't fear being a known uh, species, unknown species, and you don't fear being a known and unknown world. Do you understand? Imagine some teacher wanted to teach everybody how to be the world. They were like, yo, why am I being a teacher? Everybody, look at your world. That's where you're starting from. And then you climb out of your own inner realms and you find the others. You find the other advanced communicators that have found the neutral earth. That means life doesn't have to per se be defined by based on just your past or your present. Do you understand? It is, it is based on the potential of the future. Do you understand? That means let's say somebody makes mistakes and then they're like, yo, I still got to live like 60 years on this planet. What do I do? You know, I got I to gotta still live like 40 years on this planet. What do I do? So you got to realize the self that made the mistake also died the moment the mistake happened and passed. And you are in the aftermath of the consequence of how responsible you have been for your attention as a being in a universal sector. When I say universal sector, do you understand what that means? That means there is a potential of an incredible multidimensional symbiosis. What the human beings have been thinking is the logos, is the playful analogy of how back in the day some people were like, yo, in some fantasy you know, ideas, it was like, yo, civilization was built on a turtle's back, right? And to be honest, that's kind of like when people, unknown beings became people, right? Became you know, The unknown became known. And now the known is forgetting the unknown and suffering. And this is why it's like all the advice is like, yo, you might think that you have to know everything all the time in every moment of your conscious waking state, but when you realize it's a process, 
That means you have to coordinate to it and adjust. That means some people, their patience and their kindness and their endurance is based on their inner realms. That means the moment somebody talks to them and their inner realms go away, they become a cruel and rude person. Do you understand? But there's some people who understand that that's a quality of being. For example, I'll give you an example. When, when a child does something, okay, I'll tell you something, okay? <clears throat> when I was young, very young, um, 14, okay? When I was, I think, 14, 14, 16, maybe, I don't know. Um, my family, I have a twin brother, and then there was this other, you know, distant relative family, and they had three kids the same age as me and my brother. And the two families had gone into like some mall in Iran, okay? And I remember for some reason, right, my father takes me and my brother to the, uh, sorry, no, 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 this is a different memory. Pretty much, we go to this mall, I run up to the top of the mall without telling my parents, and I think they, they're all going there for dinner, so I think they're all gonna come up, the escalators there. Little do I know, everybody is panicking, I've disappeared out of nowhere, and I remember my brother and everybody, they come up to where the restaurant was and they see me there, okay? And they come and say, my brother's eyes. Imagine your sibling's eyes telling you like you're in trouble. Do you know what I mean? When you've done something wrong. And I remember my mother was crying because, you know, Iran wasn't that much a safe place. She was crying and screaming. And the first thing she does, she sees me, she slaps me on the face in front of everybody and in front of all the guests. Okay. I am actually, I think I am, I am miss, I think I was, I don't know what age I was. I think I might have been younger in this story actually. But anyways, that experience was a very intense moment. But it was the moment where it was a demonstration of a mother's kindness. You understand? It was as if the, my mother cared for me so much that the moment she found me, she was like, you idiot. And then she was like, actually saddest. Like she was ha like, you know, even though she slapped me, it part, part of her was like, okay, thank God he's here. You know, like he's not lost or something. Do you understand? And it was a moment where in those moments, I can't be like, yo, my mother had an ego. Do you understand what I mean? Where we're humans so beyond the idea of an ego that we can just uh, consider from one angle. Anyways, that was a moment where I kind of realized like, oh shit, I don't know. I don't know so much, you know? I don't even know that the things that I think are good that I do even are good or not, but I just have a feeling that what is important in the moment. And my attention has gone to the unknown variable. There was another time I'd gotten lost and it was in a mall. And I remember that moment, you know, I was very young. But that's the whole point. We're lost from the beginning. All the stuff the species is acting. Little did I know that every person on this planet is an Oscar winning performer. Oscar winning level performance everybody we're all acting <clears throat> but why because in some sense energy has to express itself beyond a physical dimension so it ends up being personality maybe energy is expressing itself in other dimensions in, in that means imagine in, in some planet the trees are intelligent instead of like the creatures Imagine the creatures that walk around on the planet or have the role of trees and then the trees are the intelligent ones communicating and talking.
there was a time when I was young, and uh, this is such a weird, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm going really personal here, I guess I'll share this too. I think this is one of those episodes my kids may hear in the future if I have kids. You know? <laughs> it's like, yo, how many kids do you have? It's like, what time are we talking about? In the future or now? You know, like... Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. I hope this episode was uh, engaging. You know, my attention was all over the place, but I think I pulled through. Ultimately, what I'm saying is, like, the unknown became people. People went through cultural programs, various structures. That means it's not just the behavior of our household. It's the behavior of our world hold, you know? And as the poet Rumi says, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a place. And he says, when the soul sits on that grassland, the world is too full to talk about. That means when we experience life as really a soul, there is nothing incomplete in your being. But when you experience it as a mind, you're trying to figure out how to be complete. And if you just experience yourself as a body, you're incomplete. So the idea is, is to get all these unknown beings that have, are in biological Iron Man suits to first get comfortable that there, a lot of this world is unknown. And then the next step is not to have a strategy towards knowledge. Like, I want to start a university just dedicated to the unknown. Do you know? Imagine it's going to be called an unknown versity. Do you know? And so what is the point of it? The idea is, in some sense, the unknown has such a fascination the unknown is the most important thing. Anybody who says they know something, they may, but they don't know the unknown. I've tried. There, there's a moment in human consciousness when nothing can be equated other than the unknown is unknown. End of truth cycle. You see? Anyways, thank you for li- listening. Much blessings and namaste. Rise, mankind. Rise. I'll be on Discord for those interested.